Okay, so now we know a lot about linear systems. How useful is that? We are interested in nonlinear systems. So, um, okay, we argued that we think about a fixed point and we're looking at the vicinity of the fixed point and because we can linearize around it, so therefore this uh, linear description should uh, be a good description. But that's, um, well, that's not universally true. So that's the point uh, to make here with the hartmann grobman theorem. hartmann grobman showed exactly conditions under which this linearization is really giving you the correct qualitative picture about the nonlinear system in the vicinity of a fixed point. Okay, so the idea is um, that essentially all the directions from or to the fixed point must have either inflowing or outflowing uh, dynamics. So um, technically, so one needs to define what a hyperbolic fixed point is. So a fixed point is hyperbolic if all eigenvalues of its linearization have non-negative, not non-negative, non-zero, have non-zero real part. So as I said, this means that in all directions, you can say even on a linear level, whether the flow is going towards or away from the fixed point. Okay, so then the statement of hartmann grebman theorem is best just shown in terms of a picture. One can write down it, you know, formally what, what it all you know, means, but the picture is uh, the main thing. So let's say we plot on the left side, we plot the nonlinear system. And on the right side, we plot the linearization of it. When I say we plot, I mean we look at the face plane. I mean, this is not true, not only true in 2D. I'm going to draw it in 2D. This is a statement in general dimensions. Okay, so we have a fixed point, and um, this fixed point has stable and unstable manifolds. And so let me just draw some arbitrary, you know, the curved, curved objects. I guess I just realized we didn't really define stable and man unstable manifolds, actually. Um, those are stable manifolds, are all those points that converge to the fixed point if the time goes to infinity. So it's very similar to the stable eigenspaces, except it's the nonlinear analog. So um, it's not a linear space, it's actually a curved object. Like here, this would be the stable, a stable manifold you know, you follow along that, that curve to the fixed point. And maybe there's another uh, unstable manifold. Let's say this is an unstable manifold. And so the unstable manifold is defined as those points that go to the fixed point in negative time, when you go to minus infinity in time. In other words, they come from the fixed point. Okay, so this is our, the situation. We have a fixed point and some uh, nonlinear manifolds. And we can linearize around it, and so, so we have the fixed point remains the fixed point, of course, and then we have, in this linearization, we would have an eigenvector uh, and another eigen, we would have two eigenvectors corresponding to the stable and the unstable eigenvalues that um, we sort of imagine here. And so then the statement is, okay, let me actually draw these arrows. The statement is, that there's a mapping from the left plane. So let's maybe call this left plane an xy plane. So this is x and y, and this is an x prime and y prime plane. And the statement is, there's a mapping from the uh, x plane, xy plane to the x prime, y prime plane, or in other words, you can say x prime, y prime, is equal to some function of x and y, and that function is continuous. And more, you also can go the other way. So this is a mapping going from the nonlinear system to the linear system, but you can also go back from the linear system to the nonlinear system, and so that means this mapping h is actually invertible. that you go from the linear system to the nonlinear system 
with the H inverse. Because it's continuous and invertible, it's actually a homeomorphism. And the main thing for us is that the property of a homeomorphism is, well, it's continuous and invertible. So effectively what it does, it, it uh, conserves or preserves the topology of the flow. Essentially, you can just think of that you have this phase plane and you now map it to the linearization and that's just a minus stretching, compressing or shearing, just a rubber, any kind of rubber band transformation that you can make on that phase plane. And doing that, you get the linearization. Or you take the linearization, you just have to shift, you know, squeeze or uh, sh shear it some to get the nonlinear flow. But this is not always possible. This is possible exactly when the fixed point is hyperbolic. So let, let's write that down. If the fixed point is hyperbolic. So it would not work if there was some direction where the linearization has actually say a zero eigenvalue so that the, in the linear linearization you would not know whether the flow goes out or in. Let's do a simple example that makes this very clear. Let's just do it in 1D, that's good enough. So imagine the following differential equation, simply x dot equals alpha x cubed. That's a simple dynamical system. And that's our nonlinear system. So and it clearly has a fixed point x equals zero. So if you linearize around x equals zero, then uh, obviously we get x dot equals zero. So this fixed point here is not hyperbolic. x equals zero is not hyperbolic because the eigenvalue here is actually zero. And so the um, hartmann grobman theorem suggests that in this case, you shouldn't be able to infer the topology of the nonlinear system based on the topology of the linear system. And that's easily seen if you just draw a phase line. So let me draw a phase line. And let me draw that phase line for two cases. Say alpha is positive and alpha is negative. Okay, so here's my phase line. And here's my fixed point. Here's a fixed point, same fixed point here. The linear flow in both cases is undetermined. As in, well, it's not undetermined. It's just neither growing nor shrinking, right? So x dot equals zero linearly. So it's not going out or in. So you cannot conclude now that nonlinearly also the flow is in or out. Actually, what, what this means is that the flow is completely determined by the nonlinear terms. You see, if alpha is positive, then clearly, then the fixed point is unstable. If x is positive, x dot is positive. Whereas alpha is negative, the fixed point is stable. And these two situations have different topology, right? This is an outflow, this is an inflow, but they have the same linearization. And so the upshot is that all the statements we made about linear systems and their relevance for nonlinear systems in the vicinity of a fixed point only hold if the fixed point is hyperbolic. If the fixed point is not hyperbolic, then linearization is not sufficient to tell you what's really going on. And that's where the fun is, actually, because that means um, you actually get changes in the topology when the fixed point ceases to be hyperbolic. Um, so, um, well, that's sort of when bifurcations occur, that's what we're going to st study that uh, in, uh, well, soon. Um, just one maybe comment. So this is all, these are statements about the topology and changes in the topology that are local, right? We're talking about the vicinity of a fixed point and that <clears throat> uh, topo topology change requires that the fixed point at some point is not hyperbolic because if the fixed point is always hyperbolic, the topology here and here has to be the same. But if you have 
uh, phenomena that are not local, they're global. I just draw a little picture that shows you sort of a different scenario, which has nothing to do with fixed points change in their character. And there you can have changes in the topology that are not associated with any changes in eigenvalues. So imagine you have a fixed point here, and another fixed point here, and this is actually a saddle, and this is an unstable spiral. And it just so happens in this case, the dynamics are such that there's actually a periodic orbit here, and that periodic orbit is stable. So trajectories, um, trajectories approach it, from either from this inner fixed point or even from out there, they come and eventually approach this fixed point. Okay. <clears throat> so as parameters change, what can happen is that this saddle here is approached by that periodic orbit. And eventually as this periodic orbit here grows, it could actually eventually hit this uh, saddle. And so in the extreme case, can be that this periodic orbit actually looks like this, that it just goes to that fixed point. And, and this uh, is the, what's left over of that periodic orbit. And if you change the parameter just a little bit further, you have there's the saddle is still there, and this fixed point is still there. But when you now go, this unstable spiral does not lead to a periodic orbit anymore. It actually misses this saddle point here and goes, can, can leave there. So you have in this case a flow like this. Here the flow would still, like that, eventually reach this orbit, which is called the heteroclinic orbit. Whereas here, in this case, this orbit actually just goes out there, misses here. There is another initial condition which would hit that saddle and another one would go around further like that and so the point is here the topology has changed from there is a periodic orbit to there's no periodic orbit but no eigenvalue ever changed sign this fixed point didn't really change at all the only thing that happened was that this periodic orbit got larger and larger but this is a, um, a global bifurcation rather than a local bifurcation. And so the situation is quite different. Okay, that was maybe going a little bit too far. So let me just make sure I, I didn't lose you in that way. The important part is right now was to know that if you have a hyperbolic fixed point, the linearization tells you about the nonlinear system. And if it's not hyperbolic, it doesn't. And that's when you get to study Interesting phenomenon.